The right to travel. When you're on the public roads, the freeways, the, uh, the uh, streets, the roads, they're public. It's America from border to border and coast to coast, and you have a right to travel in your private property, your car, from coast to coast and border to border without a license plate or a driver's license. It's nothing more than a contract that you offered into with the Department of Motor Vehicles, and still that contract only covers commerce, so if you're not operating in commerce, you're not driving, sorry, traveling under the auspices of a license. And uh, the uh, police and sheriff's department and all those people don't have a right to stop you for anything other than, uh, for instance, unless you were swerving all over the road or waving a gun out of the car. I or mean, injuring somebody. Yeah, if you're injuring somebody or, you know, it looks like you might injure somebody, that's going to be a problem. So, you know, that you need to get pulled over for. I'm not against a system whereby we might have a number on our automobiles so that we can be uh, held accountable for anything we might do uh, wrong. You know, that does make sense, but that number should not uh, be a, any sort of, you know, identification for uh, a tax agency, which the Department of Motor Vehicles is uh, under the tax collection. And uh, every Department of Motor Vehicles uh, has a uh, IRS agent assigned to it that is always on duty there. Oh, and. Uh, I'd like to read off the list you see on the television right now, and it says, private, not for hire. And this is a quote right out of United States Code, Title 1831. Motor vehicle means every description of carriage or other contrivance propelled or drawn by mechanical power and used for commercial purposes on the highways in transportation of passengers, passengers and property, or property and cargo. Quote, used for commercial purposes, quote, means the carriage of persons or property for any fare, fee, rate, charge, or other consideration, or directly and indirectly in connection with any business or other undertaking intended for profit. Now, are we doing that? When we travel on the roads, we're not doing that. We don't carry passengers unless they're paying us. The people that are in our automobiles are nothing more than government has a right to regulate interstate commerce and uh, if you are traveling under the auspices of a license then you're traveling under the auspices of your contract with the Department of Motor Vehicles and uh, that is uh, a privilege. So driving is a privilege, traveling is not. And strangely enough, I actually, uh, you know, it, a lot of judges will get confused by this stuff but you have, to, you have to stick to it and always, of course, be calm and have a good attitude. Um, and, and never fly off the handle with them um, because, you know, you're doing a lot of weird things like Thornton says, they don't understand, but I had a, a judge, or well, a commissioner wearing the black robe, uh, the slave trader's robe, tell me, of course you have a right, right to travel, you're licensed to do so. When I said, I have a right to travel, um, does not require a license, do, do I not have a right to travel? She said, of course you have a right to travel, you're licensed to do so. Well, that's an oxymoron. Uh, what is the definition of a license? Yeah, yeah. A license is something the state gives you to do something that otherwise would be illegal. Yeah. So you otherwise would not be allowed to do. They're giving you a license to do something that is illegal. Folks, I'd like for you to uh, seek uh, this this book out. This is a copy of the book a friend made for me, uh, just through Xerox. But the copy is called "Right to Tr the Right to Travel: uh, License or Liberty." And you can actually get a hardcover or paperback copy of this book that has all the case law in it and talks about everything. And some of the really cool things in this book that it talks about is uh, cast your mind back. It's 1879 and uh, uh, the government uh, brings some federal troops into your town and says uh, we're regulating travel and everybody has to get a license plate for their carriage, their horse and buggy. All your horses have to have a number branded into them and that number has to be registered and you have to get insurance and you have to have the, this, this license and you can't travel without it otherwise, you know, we're going to have these federal troops stopping you, uh, you know, because your, your wagon wheel has got a splinter in one of the spokes or something, you know. We have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if the power to tax is the power to destroy, Justice Marshall stated that. You can't charge somebody for riding your horse into town. You can't limit somebody's freedom to go where he chooses in the public. Now, on private property, you can certainly r limit somebody's ability to come on your land. But in the public, you can't limit somebody's ability to go where they will.
We'll read California Motor Vehicle Code Section 260. A commercial vehicle is a vehicle of a type required to be registered under this code, which means that not all vehicles are required to be registered. B. Passenger vehicles which are not used for the transportation of persons for hire. There's the commercial aspect. Compensation or profit and house cars are not commercial vehicles. A van pool vehicle is not a commercial vehicle. Of course, I guess if the people that were riding in it were paying, then it would be a commercial vehicle. First, it is well-established law that the highways of the state are public property and their primary and preferred use is for private purposes. So public property, that means we all have a part ownership interest in public land. And that their use for purposes of gain is special and extraordinary, which generally, at least, the legislature may prohibit or condition as it sees fit. And then that is court cases. That was from co court cases. We're not talking about releasing anyone of any liability for damages here. We're talking about, uh, and we're not in rebellion either. You know, we're actually trying to get the government to obey the law. You know, the government is the one that is in rebellion against the people and against the law. Um, the, uh, you know, the, the police are our servants. You know, they're there to help us, not to hurt us, right? But, uh, but instead, they represent a private company instead of uh, the free community, you know, in America that, that they are uh, well, they're supposed to existing represent upon. The people. They're supposed to represent the people, but they don't. And that is why they are, and, and the thing is, most of them don't know this either. So, you know, their training is that your job is to hand out tickets. You know, your, your job is to make sure that people are following all the regulations and policies uh, that are, are statutory in nature. Uh, and uh, every word that comes out of your mouth is a lawful order. So, you know, the truth of the matter is, you know, if you've got a tail light out, you know, the cops really don't have a right to stop you. They don't. They need either your permission or a lawful warrant to stop you. You need to have damaged somebody. And the only way we're going to fix this problem so that we don't have this monkey on our backs anymore is if we all, you know, start uh, taking, uh, uh, taking this stuff very seriously and, and learning the aspects of it and uh, and implementing it for ourselves. You know, we have to care about freedom. We have to care about our liberties. You know, instead of just freedom isn't free. Yeah, you know, something's. You know, we, we we've got to act. We need to act. And I'm going to read off again. This is from Kent versus Dulles, which is a Supreme Court decision, 357 U.S. 116. Freedom to travel is indeed an important aspect of the citizen's liberty. We are first concerned with the extent, if any, to which Congress has authorized its curtailment. And the use of the highway for the purpose of travel and transportation is not a mere privilege, but a common and fundamental right of which the public and individuals cannot rightfully be deprived. Chicago Motor, motor Court Coach versus Chicago 337, Illinois 200, and Laguerre versus Chicago, 139, Illinois 46, 28, Northeast 934, and Boone versus Clark. So you see that we have to understand the difference between rights and privileges. If you have a right to speak, you have a free speech right, it can't be taken away from you. You may not be able to enjoy that right in somebody else's home, but you can certainly do it in the public. And if it wasn't a right, then when you were standing on your soapbox crying the blues downtown and the policeman came and told you it would be $20 for the next 20 minutes, it would curtail your free speech. So you see how make, turning it into a privilege that can be taxed has a detrimental effect on rights. Here in this court case, they're saying that it's not a mere privilege, but a common and fundamental right. The only legislation that can be applied to rights is that which protects those rights, not that which would regulate them.